guys, I promised you the uh, the explanation to the comma quiz, and so uh, I'm gonna do it. So, anyways, one of the rules that I taught you was that there's a comma and a coordinating conjunction that goes between two full sentences. So we said dad and the boys is the first sentence. Then we were doing the dishes, and that is our second sentence. And then what you have to do between the two is either a semicolon if they're kind of related or a comma and a coordinating conjunction, which is what we have done here. Um, commas also go between a series of items in a list. And so Mama, Donnie, and I are the items in the series of a list. So the comma goes after Mama. Uh, you can put a comma after Donnie if you want. That is the Oxford comma. And again, as I mentioned in the podcast, this is uh, some people think that the comma stands for and, and then you would just be duplicating yourself if you in included a comma there because it would be now Mama and Donnie and and I. So, anyways, that's optional. Uh, and this is uh, items in a series slash list. Um, we're spelling each other to stir the preserves. Okay, the screen door behind me was black with flies and the smell of sh sugar strawberries cooking down filled all of out of doors. All of outdoors. So here again, we have a comma and a coordinating conjunction between the two full sentences. The screen door behind me was black with flies that has a complete thought. It can stand on its own. The smell of sugared uh, strawberries cooking down filled all out of doors. So again, that is a full sentence and between the two is a comma and a coordinating conjunction. The other rule is a comma goes between two adjectives that define or describe the same noun. So like hot describes summer and long describes summer. So you put a comma between the two. Leathery uh, describes necks. Red describes necks or next. <laughs> so again, these two adjectives describe the same noun, so you put a comma between the two adjectives. Um, another rule is that if you have a dependent clause that precedes a, an independent clause, then you have a comma be after the dependent clause. This is a dependent clause because it has the subordinate conjunction right here, and it makes that clause not have a complete thought. So it robs, I call them robbers, the subordinating conjunction robs the sentence of its complete thought. So it can't stand on its own. So that is listed first and we have a comma and then the next uh, section is a full sentence. I was long-legged enough to push off the swing and then listen to the squeak of the chain. So perfect. Now the reason why there's no comma here is because this is not a full sentence then listen to the squeak of the chains. Yes, we have a then up there, but it's only because it's sort of like a however. It's not, um, you know, eliminating the complete thought. But here, we don't even have a subject. That's why it's not a, com a complete sentence. We don't even have a subject. We listen to the squeak of the chains, but we isn't in the sentence or in this clause. So that's why you don't have a comma, uh, because um, is this just the object of the preposition? To push off the swing is the first object of the preposition. L listen to the squeak of the chains is the second object of the preposition. It's the compound object of the preposition. Um, the swing was where I did my daytime dreaming, comma, and I sat there looking, comma, sometimes taking my glasses off, comma, down past Mama's garden and beyond the wind pump to the level line of long distance. So here we have two sentences separated by a comma and a coordinating conjunction, so you have to have a comma there, but we also have a non-essential clause, sometimes taking my glasses off. So those non-essential clauses have to be uh, predicate, uh, um, surrounded by commas because they're not necessary to understand the sentence. Who cares if they took their glasses off? It doesn't prevent you from understanding the sentence meaning. Uh, and then again, we don't, this is and beyond, you know, it's again, this is a compound prepositional phrase and between a compound anything, you don't have a comma, like 
Mary and Jane went swimming. You know, there's no comma between Mary and Jane. And that's the same thing here. Down past Mama's garden is the first prepositional phrase. Beyond the wind pump is, this, and then again, to the level line of long distance. So it's, it's a compound um, prepositional phrase. Like watching had made it happen, dust rose on the road from town. So this is, a, a again, um, a dependent clause because this does not have a complete thought. And then it's followed by an independent clause because this can stand on its own. Dust rose on the road from town. Dust is our subject. Rose is the um, verb. On the road is our prepositional phrase. From town is our prepositional phrase. So because this is a dependent clause that precedes an independent clause, we have a comma after.